Now, I've put the notes out on the Facebook page, so you should be able to get to them. And um, we're looking at uh, page three, I believe it is Matthew. And we need to understand that Matthew is a bridge to the New Testament from the Old Testament, from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. Um, it quotes the Old Testament about 57 times. So that's quite a bit um, of quotes from Matthew. It's the most complete record of what Jesus taught, you'll find, in Matthew, uh, most of his teachings. There's much also in Matthew recorded about the death and suffering of Jesus. And the reason why that is is because uh, the people who were looking for the Messiah to come didn't expect him to suffer and die like he did. They were keying in on his glorious return, which we know is the second coming of Christ. And so um, Matthew takes a little bit of time of explaining and taking people back to the Old Testament to explain that uh, Christ must suffer these things on our behalf. Um, there are a couple of things, uh, parallels in Matthew that you'll see paralleling the Old Testament. You'll see uh, a parallel with Egypt in that, remember when Jesus was a little baby, he escaped to Egypt uh, so as not to be killed by Herod's soldiers. Um, he came out of Egypt eventually, just like the children of Israel came out of Egypt eventually. Um, he was baptized in the Jordan River. Uh, and if you recall, in the book of Joshua, uh, the children of Israel had to cross the Jordan River to get into the Promised Land. Another parallel. Another parallel is also how we know that there were 40 years of wanderings in the desert for Moses as he led the children of Israel out of Egypt into the Promised Land. And there's a kind of a parallel between Jesus' 40 days of fasting in the desert before he started his earthly ministry. Now there's five major sections of Matthew. They are the Sermon on the Mount, which you'll find in Matthew chapter 5 uh, through 7. Uh, the Commission of the Twelve Apostles, which you'll find in Matthew chapter 10. Uh, the Kingdom of God parables, which you'll find in Matthew chapter 13. You'll see Jesus said over and over, the Kingdom of God is like, the Kingdom of God is like. And then there's uh, kingdom citizenship principles, which you'll find in Matthew chapter 18. And then the judgment day warnings, which can be found in Matthew's chapters 24 and 25. Matthew was a Jew. He wrote his gospel mainly to a Jewish audience. In the book of Matthew, we find quite a few um, very popular and famous texts. We find the wise men who came to worship and see the Christ child. Um, a year or so after he was born, we find the account of Jesus' baptism um, when he was baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, um, who they were related. Um, we find the Sermon on the Mount, which is, some people will refer to it as the, the Christian Magna Carta. It is kind of uh, our rules of the road, how we, how we should uh, think and do things. We find the feeding of the 5,000. Um, we find Peter's confession, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. We find that in Matthew. We also find the account of the transfiguration, where Peter, James, and John accompanied Christ up into the mountain, and they saw him transform before their eyes. And we find uh, the account of the Last Supper. Matthew writes his gospel to show that Jesus Christ is, in fact, the long-awaited Messiah. He's the one that God's people have been looking for for such a long time. He's the one that the Old Testament testifies to over and over and over again when it says he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Matthew says he's here. Crazy. That's Matthew.